Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace robot motions. What that means is I'm going to show you how to trace the movement of a robot from one position to another position using a tool center point. So to give you an example, I have a demo set up in the 3D world with these four robots. And let's actually select this robot over here. So I'll first go to the program tab. And tracing is just like signaling an action in a robot. So you're using signals 17 through 32. So let's actually select the SCAR robot over here. And you notice I have some positions set up in this program. And after the robot moves to position 1, I'm then setting the output signal of 19 to be true. And that's turning the tracing on at a tool frame mapped to this signal. So let's see how this works. So I actually want to select the robot controller. And now let's go to the controller properties panel. And under the actions configuration section, you notice you have this label here called signal actions. And the output signal we're going to use is 19. So let's select that. And 19 is using tool 3 in the robot, and the material for the tracing should be green. So if I actually run the simulation, you can see, yep, the robot's tracing its movements from position 1 all the way up to position 4 using that green color. Let's so actually reset the simulation. And let's say you don't want to use tracing, but you do want to see lines from one position to another in a robot program. Very easy to do. Just go here to the show group and select this checkbox here called connecting lines. So I turn that on. I have the robot selected. And now we get these lines from the robot positions pointing to the next one. So from position 1, we see the arrow is pointing to position 2, position 2, position 3, and so forth. Let's see how this looks in the other robots. So actually, we'll just deselect the current component, run the simulation. See this articulated robot is just moving up in a big arc, and it's using a trace color of green. So it's probably using that same uh, tool frame that's mapped to that signal. So actually, let's uh, select that articulated robot, see how it works out. And yep, it's using signal 19 as well. Here we have the Delta robot. It's tracing a nice rectangle, almost like it's <laughs> exercising. And over here, this last robot, notice that it's using a mounted tool or a, a weld torch. And it's tracing from the tip of the weld torch in its program. So let's actually stop the simulation. Let's select this robot. And this robot's actually using signal 17. And the tool frame, in this case, has been just translated to the imported tool frame of the weld tip. That means if I was to disconnect this uh, torch from the robot, I would still have an indication of where the, that uh, tool position is. So notice what I'm talking about. Let's actually go to, so let's see, tool frame 1. And yep, there's tool frame 1. Set it to object, and that's its orientation. So if I run the simulation, you can see there's the tool frame motion. So from that motion all the way up there. Let's actually stop the simulation and turn on the tool frame so we actually can see that better. Yep. So there's that imported tool frame and the tool frame one. Now tracing can be very helpful if you want to simulate welding operations with a robot. And I'll show you how to get started and give you some practice for those types of scenarios. So first, go to your catalog panel, expand public models, expand eCatalog 4.0, and then click layouts. So this will display the layouts in the Visual Components Web eCatalog, which is a remote source linked to your eCatalog panel. So you will have these layouts. Next thing you want to do is open this layout here called 15x axis old. So you can drag the layout into the 3D world or just double click it. And notice it's just a very basic welding operation. So we have a robot connected to a track, a tool is mounted to the robot, the robot's connected to this workpiece positioner, and we have a workpiece attached to this plate here. So let's actually teach the robot to weld a seam in this workpiece. So since we know we're going to be tracing, we should uh, go ahead and move a native tool frame in the robot that's mapped to the tracing action to any imported tool frame that we might use. So let's actually go to the program tab, use the job command to select the robot, and notice we have one imported tool frame called TCP here at the end of the torch. So let's actually translate tool frame 1 to the same location as TCP. So go here to the job panel, use the tool drop-down menu to select tool 1, and click this gear icon. Notice I now have tool 1 selected, or you could use this drop-down menu to select another tool frame or base frame if you wanted to. Let's now use the snap command here in the tools group. And notice the context here, I'm snapping the tool frame, not the robot. So we want to snap the tool frame here to TCP. So let's actually change the snap type to frame or coordinate system. And now let's just go ahead and point to TCP. The preview looks good, so I'll click it. And yep, now tool frame is snapped to the same location as the imported tool frame. So if I change the coordinate system to object, that Z axis is pointing down, we're good to go. Let's now teach the robot using the imported tool frame. So I'll go back to the jog panel, 
let's configure the robot. So I'm going to use base one, and for my tool, I'll use the imported tool frame called TCP. And let's now snap the robot to a seam on this work position. So let's actually uh, teach the robot to weld this seam here. So I'll zoom in just a bit. And now I'm going to turn on the uh, headlight of the 3D world. So it's a light pointing from the camera. So it actually just makes your edge selection a lot easier. And now I'll go back to the tools group, click the snap command. And notice the context here, I'm not snapping the tool frame, I'm snapping the whole robot. So I'm teaching it and I get a preview of where the robot and the mounted tool will snap to in the 3D world. So let's actually snap right there to that corner point and zoom out just a bit so we can see the preview better. So that looks good. Snap it right there. So the tool and the robot snap to that position based on the active tool frame. Let's rotate the robot just a bit and it seems that the tool is colliding with that edge there. So let's actually rotate the robot along the y-axis like so. It looks about good for me, just for this demo. So that's fine for me. Let's teach this as a linear motion. So in the program editor panel, I'll click linear motion to add that to the robot's program. And now we need an approach position for the robot because we don't want the robot just, you know, just to go right there. So let's actually move the approach position up a bit and over here. She's teach that as a point-to-point -point motion statement, so the robot should go to that first. So I'll reposition point two. Robot moves down to point one. And from point one onward, I want to trace the robot's motion. So let's actually use a set binary output statement to signal an action. And we're going to use the statement properties panel to configure this. So the output port of the signal we're going to use is signal 17, which is mapped to tool frame one in the robot. And for the output value, we're going to select this checkbox to set signal 17 to be true. So that will turn tracing on. However, if output value was set to false, that's going to turn tracing off. So we want to turn tracing on. And let's now teach the robot to weld this seam uh, right about up to here. So let's actually use the snap command again. Snap the robot right there. That's fine for me. And let's actually just rotate the robot just a bit. Teach that as linear motion statement. So the robot will go to position two down to position 1, turn tracing on, trace to position 3, and let's actually have the robot move back up, so let's use the jog command, move the robot back up, teach that as linear motion statement, so position 2, 1, weld the seam, move back up. So let's see how this works out, but before we do that, let's actually turn the tracing off when we move from position 3 to position 4. So I'm going to insert that statement after position 3, so I'll select it here. Let's use a set binary output statement. Go back to the statement properties panel. We're using signal 17, so output port of 17. And the output value is false, so tracing is turned off. Reset the simulation. And let's see how this all works out. Let me get a good view for you. Run the simulation, robot moves down. And yeah, it traces that seam. Now, in some cases, you don't want the tracing to be done exactly at the, the tip of the torch. You want some kind of offset. So let's actually see how that works and how you can get that set up. So this actually is a component property, so I'm going to go back to the Home tab. Or actually, you could go to the Program tab and use the Select command to turn on Select Mode and just directly select the robot in the 3D world. But usually when you're configuring a layout or components, you should go back to the home tab. So I don't want to teach you any bad habits, <laughs> all right? So notice here in the component properties panel, there's a tab called signal actions. Just go and click that. Notice you have some options here for setting the width of the trace line as well as the trace Z offset. So from the Z axis of the tools coordinate system. And let's actually set this to be 10. And let's reset the simulation and see how this works out. So instead of tracing directly on this seam here, there should be a bit of an offset. So run the simulation again. The robot moves into strike. And yep, let's go ahead and zoom in just a bit. You can see, yep, it did have a little bit of offset here. Great. Now, if you want to turn tracing on but not set this directly in the robot's program, you can do that. So if I go back to the program tab, notice here in the show group, you have this option here called traces. So if I clear this checkbox, notice the tracing is now, you know, it's invisible in the 3D world. But I can just select this checkbox here to display it again. 
Now, in some cases, you might not want to use a native tool frame in the robot. You know, you just want to use your own tool frame for tracing. Well, I can understand that, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll reset the simulation, and now with the component properties, notice I still have the robot selected in the 3D world. I'll expand the Actions Configuration section, and we're using output value of 17 in the robot. So I'll set output to be 17. And I think I forgot to mention that signals 17 through 72 in the robot are mapped for tracing. So signal 17, when it's true, it traces on. When it's false, it traces off. And right now it's using tool frame 1. So what we can do is we can set this to be that imported tool frame of TCP. Now the problem with this is that if you disconnect the weld torch from the robot, you know, this action is no longer configured. So it's always safer to use a native tool frame in the robot that's mapped by our action configuration script in the robot. But if you want to do it this way, you can. Just remember, keep this in mind. Let's actually also change the color. So let's actually use salmon. Sounds good to me. All right. And let's see. When the trace is off, we're going to be using that TCP tool frame. All right. So I have that configured. Reset. And it all still is working perfectly. Great. All right. This concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.